Hi Max. So Max, what is the reason Royal Enfield is going electric? Is it an internal clean mobility initiative or do you uh, foresee the demand for electric with a shift in the market? Yeah, absolutely. So we looked at it as, okay, so my job was to look and say, how do we do things long-term sustainable? Mm -hmm. And that takes a bunch of forms. So one is obviously the powertrain, is that a sustainable powertrain? And the other is riding, right? That we know that really the joy of riding is only going to continue if we bring more riders into riding. So when we looked at it from that lens to say, okay, we want to create an experience that brings more riders in and new riders in. We also wanted to look at powertrains that are that, that, that may have a sustainability element in the future. So it wasn't that we are required to do it. The other third element is that we wanted to create something that was the best possible experience regardless of that powertrain. Right? That, that powertrain design is the best experience you can have. So to do that, we saw that in the category we designed here, that electric made the absolute most sense. So really electric was the end result of those three key attributes that we looked at. And then we said, it should actually live as its own brand mm -hmm. because it is it shares a lot of the same values, but actually this new experience has some additional new values for us. So it meant that we should look at another brand, Flying Fleet. So for us, Flying Fleet is an endorsed brand that allows us to do things and think a little bit differently. Right, and without the rumble of the bike, how do you feel the bikers will connect with the bike? Are there any design elements you which could help make that connection? So what we, we look at it as rumble is an element of the way the bike communicates to you. Yeah. So for us, we look at what are the other ways that the bike communicates and how do we augment it. One is all riders talk about initial, that initial feel. So we said, okay, when designing it, we wanted a very smooth, predictable, but exciting throttle response. So for us, even though there's not a rumble, the way that the bike accelerates will put a smile on your face. Right. And that's what we were looking at is we don't have to copy, mm -hmm. but look at why people are using elements right. and can we augment that experience. Can yeah. you tell us something about what's the powertrain sourcing strategy? Sourcing. So for us, it's more just the powertrain. It's the whole idea that we wanted to create the best experience for riders that we could, mm -hmm. which meant that a lot of the technology had to be developed in-house. Right. So we owned everything. We owned the entire design from the ground up. Okay. In-house design. We recruited over 200 engineers just for this program to work on the powertrain systems, the connected systems. We have over 42 patents that and counting that the that brilliant team has created. Um, and we've picked some of the best partners in the world. We've actually worked with NXP and Snapdragon directly. Because rather than just buying something in from somebody else, we knew that we had to work with the chip manufacturer. Because we're not going to make chips as an example, but we're going to work with the best in the industry that makes chips today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank I wish you the very best. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it soon. Yeah. yeah. Thank you.